Now we are going to drag the picture to our images folder and change the name to heart. So now we are appending an image instead of the letter. So we're going to use the image tag and our source is going to be images and then heart.png. So let's use single quotes outside so that we can use double quotes inside. So that's going to be images forward slash heart dot png. So let's save this and try it. So if we click on the stars button, now you can see three hearts, but they are too big. So we're going to do, we're going to style this picture so that we can change the size. So let's go back to our CSS file. Before going there, let's give our picture a class. So we're going to give it a class. life for example and now let's style this class so let's give it a width of 16 pixels and also a height of 16 pixels which is equal to the font size of the text inside the score box so that they have both the same height and also, let's add some margin. So, top and bottom, we're going to go for zero. So, we already have some padding there for the box and for the left and right, we're going to go for five pixels. So, let's save and try this. Let's save again. And now we can see our three little hearts there, and the size looks fine. All right, now the next step is to change the button text to reset game. So to do this, we are going to access the button using its ID. To reset game. So the ID of the button is stars reset. And we need the number sign there. And we are changing the text to reset game. To do that, we're going to use the HTML method which will change the HTML inside the element and we're going to set that to reset game. So if we save and try this, now we can see that our button text changed to reset game. All right. Now the next step is to start sending fruits. So we're going to create a random fruit and start moving it down, doing all those checks and going through all this list of actions. So it would be a good idea to place all this inside a function. Thus, we're going to call start action. So let's define our function at the end of the code here with the other functions. All right, now we're going to need a few pictures for our fruits. So to do this, we are going to use a nice website called OpenClipArt. And 
you can use pictures from there for unlimited commercial use. So you can use them freely as you want. So if you want to look for a certain picture, just type the name of the fruits you want and you can pick up any picture you want. All right, then you can download it on your computer. Otherwise, we can you can just uh, use the same pictures I'm going to upload with the source code. So once you've done that, then you're going to get all these pictures. Okay. And very important, these pictures originally, they're going to be a bit big, so they will take too much memory if we use them. So what we can do, we can open all of them using paint and resize them. So we are going to resize them all by giving them a horizontal value of 100 pixels. I'm going to explain later why we want the horizontal value to be the same for all fruits. And click on OK and then Control S to save and close. So I'm going to pause the video now and do the same thing for all the other pictures. All right, now we've got all our pictures resized and ready to be used. So you're going to place them inside our images folder. And now we are ready to use them from within our code. All right, now we'll need to generate a random fruit. So to do that, we're going to need to add a picture to our containing div with a random source, which is going to take one of these pictures. But to start easy, let's go for an apple. So we are going to append an image to this containing div. So if we look at this div in the index.html file, it's got an ID question from the previous project. So let's just change that to fruits container. That's better. And let's add an apple to this fruits container. So to do that, we are going to access the fruits container using its ID. And we're going to use the append method. And we're going to use the same syntax we used there. So we're appending an image of source images. And we're going for an apple. So it's going, it's going to be apple.png. And let's give it a class fruit that we can use later to style these fruits. So now if we save this and refresh the page, we can't see the containing div. And the reason why is because in the CSS file, it's still called question. So let's change that to fruits container. That's better. Okay, so let's save that and refresh the page. And now if we start the game, we can see an apple there. So what we have done here, we have added a new HTML element to our fruits container. So this is one way of doing, but it's not the best way. And the reason why is because every time we add a new element to our page, we're going to be requiring more memory. And at the end of the day, in our game, we're going to need to add fruits all the time. And this means that we might have memory issues, especially that we're going to be using some timing events later on. So there is another way of doing. I'm going to create an element inside our index.html file. I'm going to hide it. And every time we need to show a fruit, we're going to use that element that's going to appear and then we can pick up one of these images and put it in the source of that picture. So let's go ahead and do this. So we're going to go to the index.html file, go inside our fruits container, create an image and give it an ID fruit. And let's also give it a class, well, let's give it a class fruits and an ID fruits one. So we're going to use the class later on for decoration purposes. So if we go back to our jQuery or JavaScript file, so rather than appending a new image to our fruits container, 
we're going to do, we're going to make the element or the new element that we have created, we're going to make it show up. So originally, it's going to, it's going to have a display property none. So we're styling here the fruit class. So the display is going to be set to none. And once we initiate the game, it's going to show up. And to do that, we are going to accessing access it using its ID, which is fruit1, and we'll use the method show. So if we save and start the game, at the moment we can't see the fruit. And the reason why is because our image doesn't have a source attribute. And since we don't have a defined source attribute as we're going for a random fruit, we're going to use jQuery to give our image a source attribute. So we're going to go for a function that we're going to call choose fruit. So we're going to call the function here. And let's define the function which will generate a random fruit. So we're going to use the function keyword followed by the name of the function. And inside curly brackets, we'll place our code. So we would need to access the elements using its ID which is fruit1 and then we're going to use the attribute method which will take a couple of parameters the first one is source and the second one is going to be the source attribute of our image so to start let's go for a specific image let's go for an apple for example so that's going to be images forward slash apple dot png so if we save this and start the game then we can see an apple there but we would like to go for a random image so to do this we are going to create an array at the beginning of our code and call it fruits so inside this array, we are going to place all the names of our fruits without the .png. And now if we go back to our function, rather than going for apple, we are going to cut our string here. And we are going to access one of the fruits using the fruits array. So if we go for the ele elements of index 2, for example, save, then we can see cherries there. If we go for the elements of index 0, then that's going to be an apple. Elements of index 5 and you can see there an orange. Okay, so we want this number to be randomly chosen between 0 and 8. Yes, between 0 and 8. Because we've got 9 elements there, so the final element has got an index of 8. So, to do this, we're going to use the method random of math, which will give us a number between 0 and 1, strictly less than 1, and we'll multiply it by 8, and we will place the whole thing inside another method 
of math which is round and now we're going to get a whole number between 0 and 8 so now if we save and try again now we can see random fruits All right. Now, when we show our new fruit, we would need to position the fruit randomly, horizontally, and vertically, we would need to place it somewhere above our fruit's container. So to do this, we're going to access the fruit first using its ID and then we're going to use the CSS method and we're going to set two properties here the left property and the top property so the left property we want it to refer to the distance between the left border of the fruits container and the left border of our fruit but before we do that we need to make sure that the fruits container has got a property position set to relative and the fruit needs to have a property position set to absolute so let's go back to our CSS file and make this change so the fruit needs to have position absolute and the fruits container needs to have a position property set to relative so let's go back to our JavaScript file and let's set both the left property and the top property so you're going to need to use curly brackets since we are setting two properties here so let's start with the left property and just start let's set that to 300 to make sure that this is working and then comma and then the top property let's set that to minus 100 so let's try this I'm gonna save and start the game okay so now we can see the fruits appearing there so when the fruit appears it doesn't show up above the container and the reason why is because we need to set the overflow property of our container in the CSS file to hidden and this means that any element inside our fruits container that is overflowing it's not going to appear so let's try this and see how it works so now we can't we can't see the top part of the fruit let's start again see all right now let's change the top property to minus 50 so that we can see all the fruits right we can see all of them now okay now going to the left property if you remember we have set the width of our fruits to 100 pixels when we resized the picture itself we could have done that in the styling and that's perfectly fine but we have done that earlier to reduce the size of the picture to make sure that we're not using too much memory okay so all these pictures they have a width of 100 pixels and we want to position these pictures randomly horizontally so what we're going to do we are going to set the left property to a random number given that the width of our fruits container is 650 pixels 
then we want the left property to be between 0 and 550. So let's go ahead and do this. So we're going to use the function math.random. It's going to give us a number between 0 and 1. And we will multiply this by 550. And finally place this inside the math.round function to get a round number. Now if we save and try this, now we can see that our fruits, they appear in random horizontal positions.